Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting an Eldari Striking Scorpion for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. Now these guys are one of the iconic units in the Eldari army with that really nice striking uh, bright green colour scheme and in this video what we're going to do is show you how to paint that really nice bright green so your models pop on the tabletop. But it's worth noting that if you want to go for a darker tone you certainly can do following all the same stages in this video. So we hope you enjoy it, let's get to it. When it comes to painting your striking scorpions, the first thing that you need to do is decide what tones exactly you're going to use for their colour scheme. Because whilst that iconic scheme is going to be green with yellow accents, the actual shades you go for here can vary quite a bit because different temples will use different shades. So you could go for a dark green if you wanted to. Now in our example here, what I'm going to go for is a really bright green. I'm going to be using some ethereal green and I know this covers well over a grey undercoat. So for that reason, I've used standard grey from the Colour Forge. Now you might want to go for one of the brighter greens from Citadel, such as Moot Green, but bear in mind if you do want to do this, this, moot green is quite a weak colour, so it's a good idea to go for a green undercoat in this instance instead. So it just varies depending on what you want to go for, really. But as I say, what I'm going to use here is ethereal green, and all we need to do is start out by painting this all across the miniature. So what I've got is my good old rough base coating brush, medium base brush here from Citadel. That's definitely seen better days, but for our purposes here, it's perfect. As usual, I'm just going to get a bit of water on there and mix it into the paint, just being careful not to overdo it with a brush of this size. And with that loaded up, it's then just a matter of painting it onto the miniature. And at this stage, to begin with, I'm not concerned concerned about any minor detail or anything, I just want to make sure I get this green all over it. So I'm just going to apply it, working it into all the nooks and crannies as I go along. Once you have that even finished, your green of choice, the next thing to do is to put a wash on there to get some shading. And the wash you use will vary depending on what sort of shade of green you're going for here. So for example, if you're going for a dark green, I'd recommend a black wash. In our case though, what we want is a nice emerald green wash. So I've picked out some orc flesh wash for this. And to apply it, we want a nice large brush to apply a generous amount onto it. So I'm using a medium shade brush here from Citadel. What I'm going to do is load up a good amount there on the brush and then start applying it all over the model. And what we want to do is to get it to settle in that recessed detail, but where possible avoid having it settle too much on the flat areas so as not to stain them too dark. So you can see whilst I start with a lot of the paint, what I'm doing is pushing it around and getting it to go as far as possible. And it's giving us that nice shading, but I'm keeping an eye off areas such as this pectoral plate where we've got quite a bit of a blob appearing there. It's going to move away the excess and just redistribute it around the miniature. Now once you have painted this all over, give it plenty of time to dry. I'd recommend around about 45 minutes before you move on to the next stage. With that wash now completely dry, we can move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is going to be to apply some base coats on here on smaller details. And what we can do is look for all the colours that can share the same colour wash, in this case a black wash, because then it's a nice efficient way of shading them all at the same time. So to begin with, we're going to look for the black details. And if we base coat them with a super dark grey, what we'll be able to do then is shade them down with a black wash later for some depth and definition. So for that reason, what I picked out is some Death Reaper. And to apply it, I'm going for a small to medium sized brush. What I have here is a size zero from Art Opus, but if you want to go for, a, say, a Citadel brush, for example, I'd recommend going for a medium layer here and just switching to a small layer when you get some finer details, such as the faceplate. But with this colour, you just need to make sure you thin it down with a little bit of water, just bringing that water into the side of the paint just there like that, just mixing it so we've got that nice thin paint to draw from. And just make sure you haven't overloaded your brush, that you have control over it, bringing the bristles to a nice point. And then we can start looking for all the details that need to be black. So it's going to be things such as the faceplate in here, where we just want to make sure we're really nice and steady under control so that there's no shakes going on. So we can just very neatly start blocking this area in. We just want to colour it in entirely, including the eye lenses at this point. Also, we've got this crest coming out the back of the helmet that we need to get at this stage. And don't worry about the little yellow parts, just paint it all in black at this point. So they're like that. And there's going to be the weapons, so his pistol and his chainsword. Block it in entirely again at this stage, just base coating the entire thing as smoothly as possible. And then keep an eye out for any ribbons that are going around the miniature. And there is one going around his arm just here. So we want to get this at this stage as well. Once you've found all of that black detail, the next thing to do is to apply two more base coats on there before we move into that black wash. And we'll start out with silver. In this case, I'm going to use some surcoat silver, and then what you'll need is a colder dark brown. So I'm going to use some scorched earth here. But first of all, what we need is that silver, and so what I'm using is some surcoat silver applied again using my size zero brush. But for this one, I do recommend going for smaller brushes generally. So if you're going for Citadel, go for a small layer. What we're looking for is some select details on the weapons. So just make sure your paint's under control on your palette and nicely thinned down. 
then we can start looking for them. And on the chainsaw, what it's going to be is the teeth of the blade. So around here, just want to very carefully move in and just start picking them out along here. Whereas meanwhile, on the shuriken pistol, it's this central bar that goes across it. So we're looking at just in here, I want to pick this out as well. With the silver done, we can now move on to picking out some leather details, and here I'm using some scorched earth. And to begin with, what we need to do is base coat the holster around here, and then all the straps that come from it. So there's one that goes up the leg along there, and then it goes around the back as well, and it becomes the belt for his grenades and ammunition just around here. In addition, this is a great colour to pick out the grips of the weapons too. So we've got the one on the chainsaw just in here, for example, and also on his pistol, there's one just in here. With those base coats now applied, it's time to move on to putting on that black wash. And this is going to be painted over all these new colors that we've introduced since we did that green. So what we need to do is pick out a black wash to begin with. Now I'm gonna go for some Oblivion black wash for this and to apply it, I'm gonna to stick to my size zero brush, but this is one of those cases where you should just change brush size as you need to, depending on what part you're doing. Whatever you're comfortable with really, because we just need to keep this wash only on these new parts and off the green. So for example, if we start on areas such as the blade of his sword just here, what we wanna do is just apply it all the way over even so that it doesn't pull up too much in any one area, but does give us that shading in the recessed area. So particularly on the teeth, just going around there, making sure it works into nooks and crannies as we get further down as well. Now there are going to be cases where you do need to be really careful about how much you're putting on. So for example, when we get to things such as this little belt just around here. So when you're doing this, just make sure you don't have loads of wash in your brush, and you might just need to remove some off on your palette, and just very carefully apply it just over this area, just to focus it on this detail. Now that wash is completely dry, we can move on to picking out some gold details. And the reason why we've kept the gold separate from the other colors is because we're gonna use a different color wash, a nice warm wash here to get some warmth in that gold. So what I'm gonna do is start out with a base coat of dragon's gold, so a nice medium gold here, and then we need a sort of chestnutty color wash for it. In this case, I'm gonna use some flesh wash. But first of all, we need the gold, so I'm gonna use some dragon's gold, and I'm gonna fill the same brush once again, that's size zero, but again, feel free to change as you need to for these details. And it's a good idea to have a small one on hand because some of these parts are quite small. And basically, it's any sort of decoration on the miniature. So what you need to do is just start looking around for such things, such as the decorative parts on the hilt of his chain sword here. And it's a case of just picking out things such as the cross guard as neatly as possible, being really careful of all the surrounding colors as you go along. Of course, don't forget to get details such as the mandible guns as well, these little mandy blasters just around here. When you're doing these, just very carefully move in and just gently work across them just to make sure you pick out that detail without catching the helmet or the shoulder guard. Once you've finished base coating all that gold, it's time to apply the wash over the top. And what you need is a warm brown color here. So I'm using some flesh wash and we just need to neatly apply it. Just being really careful not to overdo it and just keeping it on those gold details. With that wash also now dry, we can move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is going to be to do a little bit of layering just to clean some things up and brighten some things up before we move into highlighting. And the most important thing to do here is gonna be that green armor. So in this case, what you now need to do is go back to that original green that you chose. So in our case, that's gonna be some ethereal green. And once that's done, we can then do some layering with the gold too to make it nice and shiny and decorative. So here I'm gonna go back to Dragon's Gold. But first, we've got to return to our green. So ethereal green in this case, and to apply it, I'm gonna use the size zero brush again, but go for whatever you're comfortable with here, because what we're aiming for is generally quite large flat panels. You want to be careful to avoid recessed details, which is why really it's important to have a fine tip on your brush. So what you need to do is just make sure your paint is thin down as ever on your palette, and then twist away the excess to bring the bristles to a nice point now. So you can see we've got that accuracy there and then we can start applying it to the model. And the idea is to look for the flatter raised areas. So for example, on the front of his helmet just here, what we're gonna do is apply it onto this flat area like this, so we just reestablish that nice bright green. But whenever we get close to a recess, such as just around here, because you've got this little bump on the side, that little node there, what we wanna do is just go around it. So not quite into the recess next to it, so we retain the definition there, but then we can skip past that dark part and just pick out the node itself there like that. And so it's basically this process across all the green armor, just taking your time to make it nice and bright once more. Once you've finished doing that on the green, it's then time to do the same thing on the gold details. So here I'm back to Dragon's Gold, and because these details are all really small, I've switched down to a small brush here. I'm using a size double zero. And what we're looking to do is again, avoid those recesses and just concentrate on the raised up flat areas. 
With that, we've now finished the layering on the miniature, and so it's time to move into the highlighting. And what we're going to do is start out by highlighting that green armour. And for this, what you now need is an even brighter green than what you used before. So in our case, I'm going to use some talisman green. But if you've chosen to go for something like Mook Green from Citadel, then what I recommend you do is just mix a little bit of a bright yellow into that to make a lighter tone. But whatever you choose, what we need to do with this colour is pick out all the edges and corners on the miniature. Now to do it, well, that means we should go for a really fine brush. So I'm using my size double zero here. And the trick to doing this is to make sure we thin the paint down correctly. So I've got my little puddle of paint just there. What I'm going to do is introduce the water next to it and start pulling that pigment into it. So where I'm actually drawing my paint from is going to be this region here, and this lot is just a reserve essentially. So this way what I can do is just adjust it, bring in more pigment in if I need to, or if I go too far I can grab a little bit more water and mix that back in. And this allows us to find the sweet spot where we want the paint to be thin enough that it flows easily from the brush, but not so thin that it flows out of control. So I think we're around about that point there. We can always test it by having a go at painting some lines on the palette, and Paint's going fairly easily from there, so I'm quite happy with that. So we can go from there. And so with that prepared, we will twist the bristles together to get a fine point, and then it's time to start looking for all the edges and corners that are on our striking scorpion. So for example, if we look around the helmet, we've got the, well, the visor at the front here, and we've got this brow across it. So what I want to do is pick that out. So what I'm going to do is just steady my hands so I'm really nice and comfortable, and with the side of the brush close to the tip of it, I'm just going to skim along, just making sure I'm at about 45 degrees from the flat on the helmet there, and that way I get a nice neat highlight really quickly and really easily. See, I'm just going to turn the model now to make sure I'm still comfortable and carry that on again on the other side. So just skimming along, building it up, and this way we get that nice highlight on that area. Now when it comes to Eldar miniatures, there are quite a lot of details you can do like this. And around the faceplate is certainly going to be the trickiest part, getting these areas here, just making sure you angle it correctly so you can get to those parts. But if you struggle with this edge highlighting technique, then you can just look for areas that you can do with the side of the brush and just go for those ones, and that way you'll get the majority of the model highlighted. All the important parts will be standing out nicely then, such as the shoulder just here. If, however, you want to highlight everything, then there are times where you'll need to use a tip of the brush. And that's a little bit trickier in that you've got to make sure you're really steady. So make sure you really brace your hands together. And so, for example, this edge along here, it means we're just going to go in with the tip of the brush and in a vertical motion, just follow that edge. And if you brace your hands like this, just to minimize any shaking, it's quite easy just to get that edge, then turn the angle around and follow again, always making sure you're comfortable. And this way you can get some nice, neat straight lines. So now it's just a matter of doing this across the miniature, and this will certainly be the longest stage of painting the entire miniature, but once it's done the vast majority will be highlighted and things get much quicker from then on in. And with that highlight applied, you can see now all the textures on the armor are standing out really nicely. So what we can do is move into another important detail, one of those other important colors in this color scheme, which is to add that yellow. And this appears on some raised up bands, which is why we haven't painted it so far, because now all we need to do is pick it out neatly. So we want a nice bright yellow here. I'm gonna use some skulker yellow for it. And to apply it, go for your fine brush once more, I'm back to my size double zero, because this is going to be a little bit like the edge highlighting technique, in that really we're painting some lines, but these are all in these raised up ridges for us, so it's relatively easy to follow them. The trick is, however, as always, just to make sure your paint is thinned down on your palette so it's nice and smooth and flowing well from your brush, but not so thin that it goes out of control. So you just want to find that sweet spot, which is around about there, then just remove the excess paint off the brush, and then we're ready to go. So now it's just a matter of looking for these areas, and we're looking at things such as these ones on the shoulders just here. What we've got to do is carefully line up and pick out that raised detail. So just gently moving in, looking for that raised band, and just follow along like that, just to build up that colour and get that bright yellow line. So this appears on numerous bands across the miniature on the armour. There's also an optional detail of adding a band onto the chainsaw blade down here. And if you want to do that, you're looking at about a 45 degree line from the back of it where it's flat, so we're looking about there. Just line up and do a downward motion like this just to build up that line. So just along there like that. One of the final bits to get with the yellow is going to be the beads that appear on the crest on the back of the helmet here, so these round parts. All we need to do is just dot these to pick them out. Once you've got that yellow marked in there, we can then move on to a highlight for the yellow, and at the same time we can use this colour as an optional fine highlight on the green to make it pop a bit more if you want to. And here what we need is a really pale yellow. So I'm going to use some Craven yellow for this, and to apply it I'm sticking to my small brush, my size double zero once again, because we don't need very much of this. We're looking just to accentuate the parts that catch the light the most. Now on the palette just make sure it's quite thin, just adding that water to it again, a little bit thinner than what we've been doing for those previous highlights. And the reason is because we want it to be a bit translucent, so the colour beneath shows through this. 
So with that thinned out and ready then, we can start looking for these areas. And when it comes to the yellow parts, first of all, looking for areas that would catch the light. So on these bands and the shoulders, for example, where it peaks up in the middle, it's just a matter of applying a little bit of this color to that part there. So on that side, and then just a small amount going down the other side. So just very gently there like that. Now, if you decide you want to use this as a fine highlight on the green, you're looking for parts that catch the light the most, such as the points here on the shoulder plate, and just skim a very thin amount of this on that area. So just very gently there, very gently there. Another great example beyond the brow, just a very, very small amount just on that point there. Then turn the model to make sure we're comfortable on the other side too, and just generally working around looking for all parts like this. And with that, the green and the yellow are now complete. And so we can move on to highlighting some of these smaller details. And what we can do is start out by highlighting the black, and here we need a dark gray. So I've picked out some dungeon stone gray for this. With that done, we can move on to the metallics. So you'll need a bright silver for the silver first. I'm gonna use a mithril blade here. Then for the gold, you want a nice shiny gold here. So I'm gonna use some glistening gold. Finally, we need to highlight that leather. So we want a nice mid brown here, again, a cooler one. So I'm gonna be using some ancient forest for this. But first of all, what we need to do is highlight the black. So I'm gonna use some dungeon stone gray, applied again using my size double zero brush. And the application here is gonna be the exact same technique as what we just did with that green armor. So we're looking for all the edges and corners. I want to follow along each one. So once you've got the paint thinned down so it's ready and nice and smooth, we can start looking for them. And it's gonna be things such as the chainsaw here, where it's nice and easy to approach the side of the brush and just skim along to get that neat highlight going along there, just being careful of the little bit of yellow that we've got around there. But remember, if you can't quite reach detail with the side of the brush, it's time to use a tip of it instead, such as this little band that goes around the leg just here, in which case, just carefully move in and just pick out the edge. Next up, we can highlight the silver details, and for this, we need a bright silver. So I'm using some mithril blade, and again, we're looking for the features that stand out, such as the edges and corners. And so, for example, with the teeth, all I'm doing is just touching the side of my brush to the tips of them like this, just to help me just get that nice shine on the sharp points on the end. Once that's done, we can then move on to highlighting the gold with the same technique. And here we want a nice, bright, shiny gold. So I'm using some glistening gold. And again, just work your way around all of those edges and corners. And finally, we just need to highlight the leather. So here we need a nice medium brown. I'm using some ancient forest for this. And once again, we're picking out any details that stand out. For example, these ridges just down here and the corner just running along here. And once that's done, all those details are highlighted. So what we can do is move on to a few little finishing touches, which are going to be things like the eye lenses and the gems. And there's two tones here. What we've got is red and sort of turquoise blue. And so we need to start these out by base coating them. Now for the red, we want a darker red. So I'm gonna use some Asmodeus red, but then for the turquoise ones, we want a darker turquoise. So here I'm gonna be using some sentient turquoise. We'll start out with Asmodeus Red, and to apply it, definitely stick to your small brush here because all these details are tiny. So you don't need very much of the paint, and you definitely need to make sure it's under control on your palette. So make sure you thin it down, and once you're ready, we can start looking for these features. And so for the red, to begin with, I'm looking for the eye lenses. So just gonna make sure I'm really nice and steady and carefully move in and just run that red into the recess of the eye. So we'll look at that in just there. So there we are, I just want to block that in there like that. And then for the gems, we've got a few down here, just going around the waist. So we want to get these ones in here. And just a word on the gems, not all the bumps that appear on Eldari models are actually gems. So for example, these ones on the arms just here, the ones that are gems are the ones that have a little setting in. So this one does, you can see the little gold setting around it. Same with this one just here. One final bit to get with the red at this stage is going to be the lens on his pistol, which is just hidden away under here. Once that's done, we can then move on to the turquoise gems. And for this, I'm using some sentient turquoise. And it's the same process here where we're just looking to pick out the stone of each gem. And with that base coat applied on both of those gems, we've now got a nice solid foundation to build upon as we go further with the effect. And the next stage for painting the gems in particular is to put a black wash on there to darken them down in particular areas. So here I'm gonna use some Oblivion Black Wash. And this is just for the gems of both colors. It's not for the eye lenses, nor for the targeting lens that appears on the pistol. So what we've got to do is load up a small amount of this onto a fine brush. I'm still using my size double zero for this. Just make sure you don't overload your brush because it's very easy to lose control of the wash as you apply this. So what we should do is pick a gem at a time and apply the wash over it, then pull it up to the top right. So on this spirit stone just here, for example, I'm just gonna run it over the whole area so it settles around the outside. 
Then I'm just going to pull it up towards the top right there and then remove my brush like that. And the result is that more wash settles in the top right and makes it darker in that area. Now this should be relative to how the model's standing when I say the top right. So if we think about this one just here, still means a top right up there. So again, I'm just going to apply it and then pull it up into that corner right there. And it's just a matter then of doing this on every gem, including both the turquoise ones and the red ones. With that wash dry, we can now move on to highlighting both colours of gems, and we can also be doing the eye lenses and things, but we'll start out with the turquoise ones, and for this what we want now is some lighter shades. So I'm going to be using some Curse Blue first of all, followed by some Raygun Glow. And what we want to do is start out with the dark of the two, so some Curse Blue, and to apply it, go for your small brush once more, I'm using my size double zero for this again. And what we want to do now is apply some of this colour in the opposite corner from where we pulled up that wash earlier on, so making the contrast here between darker and lighter. So once the paint's ready, we can look for those regions. And if we go to the stone that's on his chest, what we're aiming for then is this lower left corner. We want to do a kind of crescent shape going around it. So just a bit on the side and a bit on the underside, just there. The same is gonna be true for all of these turquoise gems. With that done, we can now move on to a lighter turquoise, and with this we're looking for another fine line in a crescent shape, but just a little bit further focused towards that lower left. So I'm using some Raygun Glow for this, and again it's a fine line just in this area, and when I say lower left, remember, that's relative to how the model's standing, meaning that depending on the angle of the gem, it might be a different position, such as on this one right here. With that done on those turquoise gems, we can now do the same sort of process on the red gems before we do a final touch to finish all of them off. And now we can do those lenses at the same time too. And so what we now need is a bright red. I'm going to use some demon red here, and then we want a bright orange. So then I'm going to use some orange flare. With this done, we'll then need a pure white. So in this case, I'm going to be using a little bit of white star. But first of all, what we need is that bright red. So it's some demon red now, again applied to that fine brush. So still my size double zero for this. When it comes to the red gems, we're looking for the same kind of process as what we just did on those turquoise ones. So again, that crescent shape in the lower left-hand corner, relevant to how the model is standing. So they're quite small in this case, but there's some down here. So we're looking at that little area down there. Now, when it comes to the eye lenses, instead, it's almost a line towards the front of each one. So in this one, that means very carefully just applying a bit of this color into there, just bracing our hands so nice and steady. On the other side is the exact same thing, but again towards the front of the model. So just change the angle as you need to to make sure you're comfortable, then just go in and just dot that little bit of colour in that area right there. Finally, we've got the lens that appears on the pistol, and in this case, all we need is just a bit of a brighter red just towards the front middle of it right there, just to help it stand out a bit. We're now ready for that bright orange, so here I'm using some orange flare, and on the eye lenses it's going to be a small dot now right at the very front of each eye, so just in this region right there, so just a tiny, tiny amount just applied to brighten it up at the very front, and then when it comes to the gems it's going to be a smaller amount in that little crescent shape again further towards the corner, so on this one just a little bit down here. Finally, what we need is a pure white, so here I'm using some white star, and this is for a specular highlight on all these details. So we're now looking at the opposite corner from where we've been highlighting, so just right there on the gem, and all we need is a little dot of that white finished off. When it comes to the eye lenses, is a tiny little dot of white at the very back of each one, which is a bit tricky, but just brace your hands and just go in there as steady as possible just to get that little bit of white in that back corner there. Now at this done, what you need to do is apply the transfer onto the forehead of your warrior, and then it's time to base the miniature. As ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for, but I'm going to be going for a desert base. With that base now fully painted, this striking scorpion is complete and ready to do his part in the defense of his craft world. 
So when it comes to painting striking scorpions, the main part is of course getting that green on the armor. And you can go for all sorts of different shades here, but just remember to make sure you pick an appropriate undercoat color for the shade that you use, or indeed the paint that you use to make sure you get that nice even finish before you move forward in painting the model. Now Eldari miniatures always benefit from a neat and clean painting style. So remember this, especially when you get into your highlights on that green armor, just really take your time to make sure they're neat and sharp as you can possibly get them. So have fun painting your scorpions and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you.